Hi everybody, this is Alchemist 2 and I'm back again with another book review. I just recently read a rather aged book by H.M. Hoover. I had never even heard. It's already on the table, Dad! Oh, thank you. I took care of that. Oh, thank you. You're quite welcome. <laughs> I knew you would need it. Yes. And I'll be there in a couple minutes. I'll, I'll be there in a couple minutes as soon as I finish this review, okay? Anyway, this... Uh, no, I did not. I do believe that was Scott. Oh, okay. Okay, I'll do that. Sure. Anyway, this uh, book, uh, I hadn't even heard of H.M. Hoover, or who, sh who she was. Um, according to the back of the book, it says, and I'm not sure if she's still alive, but she very well could be. It says she was born near Alliance, Ohio. She's traveled extensively in the U.S. and has ample opportunity to pursue her interests in natural history, history, and archaeology. The author of Children of the Morrow, Lions, The Lion's Cub, Treasures of the Morrow, uh, The Delicon, and She Lives in New York. I, I thought, hmm, yeah, it was very, very interesting. And this is actually published by Avon. It's a division of the Hearst Co Corporation in New York, New York. It's published in 1977, which is two years before I was brought into this world. But interesting enough, the reason I picked this up is because of my love for Homestuck. Please don't misunderstand. Aridan is one of my favorite characters. Um, I also I I relate more so to Aridan and Solux. Um, uh, when I get ranty, I, I can relate to Carcat, but I'm I'm not really like Carcat. I, I'm more like my my patron is of Feffery, of course, as you could see. Um, I'm a lot like her. I'm very much like Feffery. Um, <laughs> except when I get mad, then I would believe I would be more like Carcat. <laughs> yeah, I blow up. But I actually, when I blow up, then I just, you know, settle. This is like, ah! Uh, yeah, it's actually more like, um, Solix. I mean, I get, I blow up, and then I decompress. I mean, it is okay, it's over, and I'm not angry anymore. Anyway, the, the reason I got it was because um, the, the name of the book kind of intrigued me. And it's called The Reigns of Aridin. I thought, Aridin! <gasps> oh, it's not about Aridin and Pora. <laughs> yeah, this was written before Aridin and Pora. Um, there's the cover. And it's very short. But I really loved it, and I'm I'm keeping it because I really enjoyed the the tale in and of itself, and the mystery of it, and uh, the main character. Her name's um, Theodora Les, Doctor Theodora Leslie, and she was actually sent to Aridin, which is an uh, an Earth class planet, yet it's not Earth. And there are all kinds of different creatures on this on this world, and she's there as a, a biologist or I guess you would call it cryptobiologist or to to study the the creatures and of course there are crystals there too and I thought yeah this sounds like my kind of world and uh, <laughs> crystals everywhere now for a raw cow to go mad but <laughs> it's not exactly the um, illustrious gorgeous place that it's actually depicted with quite a lot of peril and it's yeah it's very very interesting and um, there's a little bit of tragedy involved in it as well because you have this girl named Karen who's very polite yet she's very um, she's an aged soul she's she's an old soul and she um, she she speaks like she has more experience than she truly does especially when she helps Leslie out and I thought it was really really um, fascinating I think it's just this really good study in uh, psychology and sociology and um, biology or zoology I, I guess you could call it zoology or cryptozoology um, <laughs> and um, she talks about this certain creature having the ability of cryptogenesis because only when the rains come do they awaken and yes, it's mm, that's when things become interesting. Well, it's already interesting in and of itself. But um, the planet they they named the planet Aridin, and Aridin is actually a constellation. And 
course, this is probably done during the time when Aridin was only known as a constellation, but I picked it up because of the name. Tuh. Yeah. Homestuck fan right here. I'm not ashamed. But um, I thought, okay, I'll just, we'll see if this is any good. And surprisingly enough, it was absolutely stellar and astronomically phenomenal. And it's this really taut adventure that you cannot put down. It's um, It moves very quickly, and you're um, wondering what's going to happen next. It's all about the mystery of the creatures in and of themselves and um, the interactions they have in the... Um, the relationship that um, Theodora and Karen have, um, and how she grows, she grows to love her. And at first, she's very uh, Theodora is very shy. She's not really used to being around other people, and she's kind of um, aloof and stoic. Maybe considered a bit um, s sterile in her pro. Well, well, she's not. I mean, she's she comes across as a very warm, open, caring individual. There are some other aspects of her personality that are um, in opposition with that big heart that she has. And the one thing that um, it discusses about her is um, she felt kind of we strange when when Karen became frightened in the night and wanted to sleep in her sleeping bag. But it's um. Yeah, it's very, very well written, and it's it just it reads like a, a thriller novel and a mystery, all in, uh, encompassed in a sci-fi story that just you know it grips you and it never lets you go. And sadly, it's very short, but um, I'm glad I had a chance to read it, and I absolutely love it. And it's just beautiful, and especially in the fact that it has a happy ending for for Karen, given what have given what happens, I'm not going to say what happens. That her parents are involved. Let me just put it that way. Uh, her parents had um, had come to to the planet in in order to do some discoveries of their own. And um, Karen is not an Earth citizen. She was not born on Earth. There are a lot of uh, explorers that that were sent to Eridan to do. Um, research and development and uh, experimentations and mine and uh, mining for crystals and and et cetera et cetera and um, yeah it's it's very very well written and uh, the ending I thought was very satisfactory and just really splendidly splendidly written and if you have a chance to read it then then I don't know how many um, copies are left. I, I think I got one of the last copies. I, I bought it off Amazon for a penny and I was I felt really lucky to have done that. I'm like, who is this H.M. Hoover? I've never heard of her. And I'm glad I was able to be introduced to, to her writing because uh, she reminded me of Ursula K. Le Guin. Oh, Ursula's um, Ursula's similar because Ursula, she's um, she's very cerebral. And I love that about her. And she's very precise and concise about her details. She's she weaves worlds like uh, Earthsea, which I absolutely love. Earthsea, Earthsea is not a sci-fi novel. It's more considered a fantasy. It's kind of off the beaten path for Ursula, but uh, Ursula really writes a very, very, very compelling sci uh, fantasy um, novel. And Earthsea is just, I, I absolutely adore Earthsea. It's, it's one of my favorite uh, books slash movies of all time, even though it was done by uh, Miyazaki's son, Goro. But uh, I did a review of that a long time ago. But this would be interesting to be done as a, a film, I think, but I, I doubt very seriously if it ever will be. Um, it's nice to think of it that way, but it's very, very fluid in, in the way that it segues from just one scene into the next, especially with um, <laughs> Theodora being the vo voice of reason. And a lot of people would say, well, look at the crystals. And she says, forget the damn crystals. And I thought, yes, thank you. That The crystals are not what is important here. We're, we're looking at creatures we don't understand, and we're talking about murder. <laughs> and uh, 
possibility of us becoming the next protein source for these <sighs> monsters. So there's a bit of B movie element to it as well that I really like, but um, that's that's the part of the B movie element. Uh, but that's all I had to say about the reigns of Aridin, and it's just really still uh, like I said, extremely uh, magnificent, marvelous book, um, awe inspiring, and. Um, I'm glad I had a chance to actually finish it in a day. You can finish it in a day. It's, it's only 170 something pages long, and it's a very easy, quick read, and you won't regret it. And I, I think if you're like me and you're a big sci-fi buff, then it'll go into your library forever as a treasure, never to be forgotten. <laughs> Maneuver this over here. Later.